Hello. Thanks for joining me and welcome to Tips for the Transition. I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, your host. I am so happy to bring yet another story in the book From Resilience to Brilliance. The women who authored this book inspire me with their courage uh, to face those life events that sometimes turn us upside down. My guest today is Regina Thomas, whose story is called Betrayal. Many of us have felt betrayed at one time or another, and Regina's story broke my heart because she felt betrayed at one of the lowest moments of her life, just when she needed support more than ever. Welcome to Tips for the Transition, Regina. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Maria. So let's just get into it. Please tell your story to us. Okay. Um, betrayal is like experiencing death. And unfortunately, I experienced them both at the same time. Um, I lost my son just a few short years ago. And during that time, I worked for a large organization that was very supportive, very family oriented, and they helped me through that trying time, me and my family. So at that point, I thought that I can go back to work and find some sense of normalcy because I know I have a support system that will be there for me. So I went there back to work shortly after the burial of my child. And things were going really well for quite some time um, until a new employee and a new supervisor came on board within that same year. So during that time, I suddenly felt stress and pain in my stomach because it seemed as though my value was starting to come into question. And it was coming into question based on deceit, uh, sabotage their own insecurities because of my longevity of being at that organization. And it was just unfounded. I never even saw it coming, the betrayal. I was just blindsided. And, and I say that being blindsided in plain sight, I was there and it was happening right in front of my face. And it was happening at the same time that I was losing, that I lost my child. So I'm already going through those stages of grief and, and trying to understand why my son was taken at such an early age with this tragic accident. And so I was trying to process that and going through the denial, all the stages that I went through. And then to have to start grieving for the career that I've known and had for so many years. Um, and I wonder, who does that? Why did they do that? But once a target is put on your back, it's there. And I felt that a target was put on my back. Um, but here again goes that blindsided. I thought because of my longevity and the relationships that I had built with the hierarchy, they would understand that this is not the person that she's being portrayed to be. The person that I know have work ethics, have uh, been loyal to this company. And I thought they would have checked in with me but they did not. It continued with um, just badgering and, and it just was not fair in my opinion, but as we all know, life is not fair. So I did fight the good fight. Once I figured out that the hierarchy was digging their heads in the sand 
as though they didn't see what was taking place, that my livelihood was in jeopardy, my career was in jeopardy, my heart was broken. I would have thought someone would have came from the sand, from their head buried in the sand to say, wait a minute, let's put on the brakes. Let's have a conversation with her because that is not the person we know. But when it didn't happen, I continued to fight as within a year going through the difficulties of being targeted after 20 plus years of superior performance and uh, stellar um, reviews. Then within one year, I go from an A to an F. That was just unfounded. And if that was the case, why wouldn't anyone check on someone who just buried their child? It didn't happen. And after fighting for a year, I decided they didn't deserve me anymore. They didn't deserve the quality that I had to offer um, because they didn't know how to embrace me when they should have embraced my work ethics being challenged because it was unfounded. So um, I did find that there was a silver lining at the end of it. After the end of all the madness and the fighting and the frustration, the silver lining was I always had a dream. And that, that dream was, was entrepreneurship, that I was going to be my own boss. And I had that dream for many years. And so when I decided it was time to leave that organization, I decided it's time for me because they no longer could define who I was. They never had that opportunity because it wasn't theirs. Mm. Oh, Regina, I am so sorry for your loss, for your losses, as if losing your son would have been that losing your, the respect that you had um, at your job, at, with your work family, for all of that to go away. Those are difficult times for sure. And I, I have so much respect for you uh, because at the end of your story, you lifted us up again from uh, you know, bringing us through that journey of, of, of difficulty to that uh, bright light at the end. And I love that. Thank you for lifting us up at the end. I know that you have gone through an enormous series of emotions during this uh, whole trial of losing your son, the emotions of that, the grief and the loss, and, and of the loss of your career as you knew it. So tomorrow, I would like for you to tell us what all that was about, the emotional part of it, so that we can understand how you found your way through uh, to uh, ultimately uh, speak your truth and stand up for yourself. So will you tell us about that tomorrow? Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you so much. So for the rest of our viewers, stay tuned. I'm Maria Tomas Keegan. Till next time.